Today, things get dicey as Paula Deming joins me to ask... Who's playing what now? Hey there, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Who's Playing What Now? The game show that tests our contestants' knowledge of which board, card, and tabletop games are being played by the most people the most recently. And today is an extra special episode because I am joined by Paula Deming of the YouTube channel Things Get Dicey, plus a metric ton of other stuff. Paula, thank you for joining me. How are you doing? Oh my gosh, thank you so much for having me. I am very excited to be here. You have started posting several very, uh, really cool uh, YouTube videos kind of yeah. with based on board game comedy. It's basically sketch comedy for people who love board games, um, which was just a way for me to combine two things that I really love. I obviously love board games and I'm also an actor and I love comedy. Um, I do a lot of improv, I do some sketch comedy, and I thought this is a great way to combine these two things that I love into one thing. I appreciate everyone who's watched and enjoyed them, so. <laughs> well, well, hopefully they will enjoy watching this one, especially one viewer, because what we are going to be doing so. is we're going to randomly select a viewer from the previous episode who posted a comment on that video's uh, comments section. And we, you, actually, not me, not we, but just you, are going to be Ugh. playing to win that viewer a prize. And today's prize is a gift certificate from the Board Game Geek store, uh, where there's cool. promos and games actually on there too, and all sorts of bits and pieces and upgrades and even artwork. As soon as we're done recording this, I will check it out. No, no, I'll pause <laughs> the recording. Go to it right now, Paula, I'll wait. All right. <laughs> So all we need now is the, our name of the contestant that you're going to be playing for to win that gift certificate. And this episode, you're going to be playing for a user named Puzu. I hope I don't disappoint them. I, you know what? <sighs> Leave that to me. I think I'm ready. Let's do it. Okay. So the standard procedure for the first round is all you got to do is you mm -hmm. got to tell me the games that you think people have been playing the most based on the plays that people log on Board Game Geek. And we're looking at the number of unique users that log plays of this game. However, there is a catch. The top 10 games, the most played games, are off limits, all right? So they'd be too easy to guess. Of course, you know, and <laughs> that, that's the theory anyway. So without any further ado, let's actually take okay. a look at which 10 games are going to be off limits by looking at the top 10 most played games. Number 10 being Splendor. This is a game that I have actually played and Ooh. also liked. Uh, and so the fact that it's on this list makes me feel validated um, <laughs> as a gamer, but also just like as a person in general. <laughs> I, let, let's see what happens now. Number nine, which is uh, Gone Sean Clever or That's Pretty Clever. Okay, so this is a roll and write game. Roll and write games are for people who love Yahtzee, but also who want to feel like they're cool, <laughs> which is, is just me. <laughs> That's just, it's just me that I, I'm referring to right there because I love Yahtzee, but I want to be cool. <laughs> Number eight is the Quacks of Quidlingburg. Quacks of Quidlingburg is uh, a game about being basically you're a quack doctor um, brewing fake potions for your patients. So it's basically a Moliere play. And that is a joke for theater nerds. If you have any theater nerds watching this, leave a comment if you got that joke. <laughs> and the rest of you, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's continue on without comments to number seven, which is Sagrada. A Sagrada. Okay, so this is a dice drafting game about making a stained glass window. Um, and it's proof that themes that sound super boring can actually turn into games that everyone is playing. Like, just imagine what will happen if they ever reskin this for Cthulhu. And you know what? If they somehow <laughs> include minis with it, then, you know, people... It's done. Yeah. Done. Yeah, I mean... I absolutely agree. <laughs> Number six is another game that's been getting a lot of buzz, but also has no minis, which is Architects of the West <clears throat> Kingdom. This is a worker placement game uh, where you're an architect and you're trying to please the king. And the game takes place in 850 AD. So I'm just assuming that at the end of the game, all of the women architects get burned at the stake. <laughs> I'm glad you laughed at that. I um, actually really love the art in this game. Mm -hmm, I, I think mm -hmm. it's really beautiful. So. Absolutely. <laughs> Number five on the list also actually has very attractive artwork, and that is yeah. Wingspan. This game is about hatching a baby pterodactyl and raising it to be the largest pterodactyl in the game. That's not true. I actually don't know this game. I've never played it, but I feel like I've played it because my entire social media feed is nothing but pictures of it. Number four is Scythe. 
in Scythe, I get to be a girl with a pet bear. Okay, the bear is bad at engine building and planning ahead, and it's a bear that never wins, ever, ever, never wins this game. Um, but it's a bear. Number three is Gloomhaven. I have played Gloomhaven. Um, it's a dungeon crawler that, okay, I'm going to pitch you a new theme for Gloomhaven. Mm. I think that Gloomhaven could be rethemed to take place in an office. Um, so that leveling up would be uh, promotions into middle management. And when you finally retire your character, your new character comes in as an intern. And I think this would just fit in really nicely with all the admin that you already have to do in the game. I love it. I want to play that right now. <laughs> it's an office crawler. <laughs> Can you actually like have part of the game be that you actually have to write up reports between games? <laughs> you just send memos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we can't play next Friday until I get your audit of last game. I'm sorry. <laughs> The game's taking a little longer this time. It's harder to kill these enemies, so I'm going to have to ask you to stay into some OT. <laughs> this game, like, writes itself. It's perfect. Uh, mm. Number two on the list is Terraforming Mars. I feel like I should have played it because it sounds exactly like something that people in Star Trek would do, and I am a huge Star Trek fan. Oh. Um, except in Terraforming Mars, you're playing as a corporation, which means that you have no qualms about violating the Prime Directive. That is a conundrum, isn't it? Yeah. And number one is Azul. Azul. This is a game about laying tiles, both uh, literally and figuratively, uh, to decorate, I don't know, your bathroom um, or your palace, I think is actually what it is in the game. Um, this game is proof that themes that sound super boring can turn into games that everyone will be playing. I mean, just imagine what will happen when they retheme this for Cthulhu. <laughs> All right. It's official. <laughs> You win the countdown. I can't compete with that. That was that was nice. You win. Let's let me pick my dignity up off the floor and let's continue on to round number one. I I also should probably pick my dignity up off the floor. <laughs> all right. So Paula, now that we know the ten games that are off limits, yes. it's all okay. up to you to win some okay. money for Pazu for our contestant. Pazu. The big P. <laughs> the big um. P, yes. Uh, so, and all you got to do is pick the games that you think have the most players, and you will win a penny okay. per player towards our prize pool. What is your pick for number one? I'm using this more as a way to judge, again, how cool I am. So I have picked the last five games that I've played, and we're going to find out if I have good taste based on other people who are logging games <laughs> on BoardGameGeek. My first guess is Betrayal Legacy. Oh gosh, I hope that I'm cool. I hope I'm playing a cool game. Well, I, I think the votes are in that yes, you are playing a cool game because yes. 630 people logged plays of Betrayal Legacy last month, which starts our prize pool out at $6.30. Let's see if yes. you continue to be cool with your second pick. <sighs> Okay, the next game, I just played this for the first time, actually while making my most recent sketch video, um, and it's Concordia. Oh, Concordia. All right. This is not a new game, but people seem to like it, and I enjoyed it, so fingers uh, crossed again. Concordia comes in at number 28 on our list with <gasps> 998 people logging plays of that. I am so cool. <laughs> there, the, proof, the proof is in. The proof is in the vote. Yes. 998 different people log yes. plays of Concordia. What a very interesting number, 998. Huh. 998. Two huh. more. If I, I, you know what? I did not log my play. If my husband and I had logged our plays, that would be an even 1,000. It would have ah. been. Ah. Oh, oh, just something to keep in mind for the future, I suppose. Yes. Okay, my third pick is a game that is kind of new. Um, some reviews of it just came out. I got it as a Christmas gift. I'm really enjoying it. It's Treasure Island. Oh, is that the one where you're actually drawing on the board? Yes. For Sharpies? Yeah, you have a board and you have um, markers and you actually like mark on the board like I'm searching this area. And then the person playing Long John Silver tells you if the treasure is hidden in that area. It's, it's pretty fun. Well, a lot of other people think it's fun too because it comes in out of a thousand games on my list it comes in at number 173 okay 346 different people logging that is not that bad so my next pick is um an oldie but a goodie not that old um eldritch horror 
Oh, Eldritch Horror. So I feel like I see people talking about playing this game a lot. I feel like it's one that is still popular. Um, and I just recently played it. So I'm, I'm hoping other people did too. A few people did because it comes in at number 183 on the list okay. with 323 people logging plays of that. So that takes us nice. up to okay. going, going into our fifth and final question for the first round. We are at $22.97. You know what? That's not bad. Now, now, do I want to guess the, the most recent game I played that I feel like actually may not be that high in the list? Or do I want to go for one that I think might have a lot more... You know what? This isn't about me anymore. Wow. It's about... P- our, our contestant. Can, can it be? Oh, I was going to ask if it could be about me now then. But okay. Yes, you're right, though. It's about, about, it's about our contestant. <laughs> yes, it could be about you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to guess Keyforge. Keyforge. Ooh. <sighs> Lots of people are talking about it. And I've only, I did not play it recently. I have played it. It got demoed for me. Oh. So this is not a game I've been playing, but I'm hoping a lot of other people are. Well, I'm happy to say that your hopes have come to fruition because it comes in at number 19 on the list with 1,326 cool people playing it. Oh, (laughs) man. Bringing your round one total up to $36.23. That's 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 pretty cool. (laughs) I'm not not so late. I'm not a loser. No. I'm going to set up for round two, and we'll be right back, and we will continue to put your board game playing knowledge to the test. (laughs) All right, Paula, in this round that doesn't have a name yet for whatever this game is called, so if you come up with something clever, let let me know. But what I am going to do is I am going to give you three games that were played this last month, and then I'm actually going to tell you how many people played each game. Okay. But of course, in a different order. All you gotta do is match the number. Numbers to, to the, the game. To the game. Exactly. Okay. You are gonna okay. win $4 towards the price pool for each individual one that you get correct. So a total of <gasps> nice. up to $12 per total question. Ooh. So I thought I would start off kind of with a nice introductory one. So here okay. are your first three games. Okay. Dice Forge. Dice Forge, all right. Key Forge. So many forges. Yes. And the third one is Key Flower. Key Flower. Okay. Okay. Dice Forge, Key Forge, Key Flower. All right. Okay. Here are your numbers from lowest to highest number. 268 players. Okay. 644 players. Mm Mm-hmm. And, oddly enough, 1,326 players. Hmm. I wonder which one that belongs (laughs) to. 1,000... What was it, 326? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm pretty sure that one's Keyforge. Okay. Um, are more people, people playing Keyflower or Diceforge? I think... Oh, no, now I'm going to have analysis paralysis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, okay, I have heard... Now, maybe it's just my circle of people that I see talking about games. I feel like I've heard more people talking about Keyflower than Dice Forge. This might be wrong. I'm going to say Keyflower has 644 and Dice Forge is 268. And now I immediately regret that choice, but I'm going to stick with it. You locking it in? Yeah, I'll lock it in. Okay. You're off to a, a decent start here. Uh, of course, you nailed Keyforge with 1,326 players. The next one down was Diceforge with 644, and Keyflower had 268. <sighs> However, you did add $4, $4. to the price for it, which is not bad at all. <sighs> all right, Big P. Let's see if, we, let's see if we can do better. I'm talking to myself and to the player I'm playing for. Efficient. That's <laughs> Thank you. All right, so after that um, one, I, I started to run out of ideas for sets to make. So uh, I, I, I noticed <laughs> that the, the YouTube series that you've been doing is called Things Get Dicey. So yes. here's your three games uh, for, for this round, for this question. The first one is a game called Things, dot, dot, dot. Oh, okay. okay. Your second game is Get Bit. Okay. The, the shark chasing swimming game. And the third game is Dice City. 
So Okay. So the games are Things Get oh Bit Dice City. So uh, the number of players for each one is 17. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. One of them had 70. Okay. And one of them has 110. I have not played any of these games, but I did just recently see someone talking about Get Bit. Um, <clears throat> Get Bit, Dice City. I'm going to say Things has 17 plays. Okay. Because um, I have never heard of that game. <laughs> I'm sorry, the designer of Things. I'm going to say Get Bit is 70 and Dice City is 110. All I'm right. locking that answer in. You're locking that in. <clears throat> <gasps> You're locking that in. And you locked in perfectly. All three yes. of those are correct. So that is $12 yes. added to the price pool right there. Oh, I'm cool again. <laughs> so let's move on to question number three. Now, from my understanding, you're also involved with a project called Fan Theory TV. Uh, I am. Since Fan Theory TV inspired me, I was able mm -hmm. to come up with these three games. Great. Fan to see realms. Okay. okay. Big Bang Theory, the party game. Great. And Warhammer Underworld's Night Vault. Because the word Night Vault was the only word on the entire list I could find that had the letters TV. TV? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how many people who make use of Board Game Geek are also the kind of people who play Big Bang Theory, the party game. That is a very, very interesting question. And know. it's probably going to be one of these three numbers. <laughs> it's either. <laughs> I'm about to find out. <laughs> it's, uh, it's either 293. Okay. Or 67. Okay. Or zero. <laughs> um. I wish 67 people logged their plays of Big Bang Theory, the party game, this month. But I honestly, no offense to anyone who has loved that game, I feel like that's zero people. All right. <laughs> um, I'm going to say that one's zero. <clears throat> I'm going to say Warhammer is 67. Um, because there are obviously a lot of people who love Warhammer games, and there are a lot of different Warhammer games. Um but I feel like that might be a slightly smaller group. And so then I, so I think Fantasy Realms is going to be 293. Okay, you're locking that and in. And if my logic is wrong, I apologize to all the Warhammer people out there. <laughs> all right. Well, your logic is dead on because yes! you have it again. Fantasy Realms, 293. Uh, Warhammer Underworlds, Night Vault, 67. And Big Bang Theory, the party game, zero. However... You were worried about offending people. I don't think you need to worry about that because I looked through the logs and last month was also zero. So there's <laughs> no one's. <laughs> no. <laughs> you guys, y'all, go give the Big Bang Theory party game some love. It is sad. No one is playing it. <laughs> are, are, you, are you planning on playing it? No. <laughs> that perfect answer takes us up another $12, uh, taking yes. the prize pool to $64.23. Mm. We've got two I questions feel like left. This is pretty good. You can probably get something pretty sweet from the store for that amount of money. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. No, uh, And like I said, you know, going along with kind of my family motto, you definitely, definitely could be doing much, much worse. Much <laughs> worse. It could always be worse. Yes. <laughs> All right. Let's continue on to question four. So it turns out that of the many, many projects that you seem to be involved in, another one is something called Sasquatch Radio. So Sasquatch is like Bigfoot, mm -hmm. which lives in the woods. So the yes. three games that I came up with for question number four are <laughs> The Fox in the Forest. Okay. The Grim Forest. Okay. And One Deck Dungeon Forest of Shadows. Okay. okay. So Fox in the Forest, The Grim Forest, and One Deck Dungeon, Forest of Shadows. Okay. And your numbers are 65. Okay. 140. 140. And 385. 385. <clears throat> oh boy, I think this one's kind of tricky for me. Um, I'm gonna, I think the least number of plays on this list is One Deck Dungeon. I'm gonna say that one's 65. Um, Fox in the Forest and Grim Forest. 
I think... Now, I've been... I actually just saw someone talking about Fox in the Forest recently, and so this is making me doubt myself a little bit. I have not played Fox in the Forest, but maybe... Maybe other people, maybe it's one of those games that a lot of people are playing, but I am not cool enough yet to have played. It's very possible. But I, I, I'm I, going to guess Fox in the Forest at 140 and Grim Forest at 385. All right. I'm, I, that, I might have that backwards, but that, that's my guess. All right. Locking that in? Yes, I lock it in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it was a little backwards because your, oh. you, your, your, your double thinking of yourself was actually correct. Because, yes. Uh, Just one like deck in that dun- first one. <laughs> yep. One Deck Dungeon had 65. Grim Forest had 140. Ah. And Fox in the Forest had 385. Yep. Um, so that adds $4 to the prize pool. And question number five is uh, inspired by the uh, most recent... YouTube video of yours, uh, I okay. saw as of this recording, which was titled, I think, New Game Who Dis? Yes. Where you, yep. you, in, you introduce your uh, your loving new copy of Concordia to the world. Yes. Yep. So, based on that, uh, here are your three games. Okay. The first being Concordia. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And the second one being Concordia Salsa. Okay. And the third one being Concordia Venus. Mm. Uh, right? And your numbers to match are 69. Okay. 148. Mm-hmm. And just two players short of a thousand at 998. Hmm. I wonder which one that one is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so can regular, just plain old regular Concordia. Uh means 998. Got a good oh, could have been a thousand. Um <laughs> <clears throat> I'm going to say Salsa is 148 and Venus is, what was that, 69? Um, Because I recently saw someone talking about Concordia Salsa on the internet, but I haven't seen anyone talking about Venus. So this is less a judgment of whether or not I'm cool and more a judgment of whether or not my social group is cool. While social media does have its moments, uh, it's not as cool as it could have been this time because (gasps) while Concordia did obviously come in at 998 players. Uh, Salsa got 69, and Venus got 148. My social network is letting me down. However, dashed hopes for the social infrastructure of the internet or not, they (laughs) did add $4 to the prize pool, bringing you to a grand total of $72.23, which is pretty darn cool. I feel pretty good about that. Me too. I I think it's uh, fantastic how your earlier picks actually dovetailed into helping you later in the round. That, that was really neat. <laughs> so, Paula, before you go, uh, tell me what, where else, what are you up to and where else can people find you real quick? We've talked about it a little bit, yeah. but what's, what's just, give me the rundown one more time. Yeah, so basically you can find me on Twitter if you want, if you just like liked me as a person. It's just my name, uh, Paula Deming. Uh, Or if you want to follow my sketch comedy series about board games, you can find that on Twitter at Things Get Dicey, uh, which you can also find on YouTube. My YouTube channel is my name. Uh, So on YouTube, you can search for Paula Deming. Or if you type in Things Get Dicey, it should pull that right up for you as well. Um, And you can give that a little subscribe. We should have a new episode of that coming out. Oh, who knows when this, you know, anytime, just anytime now. Um, And... uh, (laughs) Yeah, if you were interested in uh, Sasquatch Radio and listening to some fiction podcasts or audio drama, you can find that on Twitter at Sasquatch, spelled S-A-S-S-Q-U-A-C-H, radio, uh, or find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Yeah, those are, those are the things. Well, Paula, before I go let you go and earn some much, much needed rest, apparently, uh, let me first uh, say that if you were this episode's winner, uh, you will find instructions on how to claim your prize in this video's description. So go down to the description, do that, and follow those instructions, and we'll get a gift certificate sent right off to you. And if you would like to enter to win next episode's prize, all you have to do is comment on this very video that you are watching right now using the hashtag who's playing what now, and in your comment, Mention, Paula, what's something they could mention in their comment? You can let us know what you think about our idea to make Gloomhaven about offices. To be, what do you think about Gloomhaven as office haven? 
Tell me, oh yeah, oh Office Haven. That's that's perfect. All right, staple your idea to the comments below. Uh, you know, take it to the max, and we'll put those in a little depot, and we'll get all those Office ideas entered <laughs> for next month. In the meantime, uh, I've been Chaz Marler from uh, Board Game Geek and Pair of Dice Paradise, joined by Paula Deming from everywhere, apparently. <laughs> but but most uh, but most specifically to perhaps your interests, uh, things get dicey. Absolutely. Board game sketch <laughs> comedy. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So until next time, let's go play some games. Yeah. I actually did a little bit of research uh, before uh -oh. the show, yes. And from my <laughs> understanding, uh, you are currently recording an episode of Who's Playing What Now. So how, how is that going for you? Uh, so far, it's good. So far. But it's really early in the process, so you, you know who knows how it's going to end up. But right now, I'm feeling pretty good about it. I'm really glad you're feeling <laughs> good about it because that's all I have time to research. Um.